Hey cats, it's Ed Midsole Bud here, back once again with a 100 mile review for you of the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flying It 3. It's a shoe I picked up with my own Earth credits earlier on this year. How was it held up over my runs and for casual use too? Let's find out. Is my pair of the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flying It 3. Picked these up back in February and I've got well over 100 miles of use into these already. This isn't a shoe that Nike have sent me, it's one I've picked up with my own Earth credits. Today I give you my honest views and opinions. Been using the shoe mainly for daily miles, easy efforts, recovery stuff and a few longer runs and some commuting to and from work. So I think I've probably got about 140 miles into the shoe so far. Gonna kick off my review with the upper first. I think first time around in my initial review I gave it about a 2.8 out of 3. Otherwise I've had sort of few issues really. There's just some stuff here that I think they can further refine in future versions. A few people had some lockdown issues. I've experienced none of that whatsoever. Using a runner's knot I found the fit to be excellent really with no heel slip. Comfortable without any issues whatsoever. There's little bugbears really. The laces here are quite thin and coarse. It's kind of the opposite to what we had in the V1 and 2. Those are very thick. They're in fact the same ones actually that they use within the Nike SB models. Those like skateboarding shoes. This time around we got some very flat laces and they can be a little bit irritating and annoying to get a really good sort of bow. Just kind of come undone a little bit. And if you've got very cold hands, it can be quite hard. Bug bears. I do like the much more refined upper here though on the V3. It's much better than the V1 and 2. I found it a little bit more breathable as well. Doesn't feel like you've got one of grandma's jumpers on your foot. I found that the upper didn't really flex or give at all over the first initial miles. It's just pretty much been the same all the way through. I find the pull tab here just a bit irrelevant really. I just don't think you need it. There's a lot of people I see on YouTube actually keep putting their shoes on already tied up. It makes me feel a bit upset. I think if you loosen off the laces and then retie, you're going to get a really good lockdown over the top of the foot. Perhaps that's where people are going wrong, I don't know. I've had no issues at all with this shoe in terms of the upper. I think you could just remove this really and just lose a bit of weight on the shoe. Now, there are some reflective elements on this shoe, but again, I think it's a bit of a red herring. I don't see how a tiny little reflective strip is gonna make things safer for you. I think wearing a very prominent headlamp and like a high-vis shirt is a much better option. The fit has worked for me in the upper. I think I'll give it a 2.8, same score I gave it before. Midsole now. And there is a lot of midsole here and I still think there's just too much and a lot of that midsole in the wrong places. I say that, but this shoe is kind of impossible to actually replace, I suppose, in the shoe rotation. There's nothing that's quite like it in terms of the squashy and forgiving feel. And that's pretty much as per the V1 and V2 as well. It's just a really comforting shoe underfoot if you've done a really hard session like the day before, perhaps a race even. The Zoom X here is like a cradling type of foam. It's just kind of getting you through the day. Though I would suggest it's more of an impact absorber than something that's going to provide you with loads of propulsion. I guess the only things that are even close for me personally are Nitro Elite from Puma and maybe the fuel cell material from New Balance. Uh, very resilient and bouncy but it's not quite the same as this stuff. I've been using this shoe predominantly for easy miles and recovery sessions. I've done some longer slower runs in it too but it did feel a little bit like I was running around in quicksand towards the end. Yeah, my legs felt great, but it wasn't really the most exciting, exhilarating feeling. So if that's what you're after when you're out running, no matter what pace you're running at, then this might not work for you. Just don't expect that super springy propulsive feel. It's kind of like an energy absorber, like an effort leech. It's not really returning energy to you. It's just kind of absorbing it, nullifying the effort. <laughs> Does that make sense? Let's remember that energy return is a bit of a myth. It's all about kind of minimizing energy loss. 
The shoe does work though when it comes to preventing those aches and pains. I can see a whole bunch of people using this in retail, perhaps in services where they're stood on their feet all day. I do applaud the effort from Nike here where they've tried to refine the midsole profile a little bit. They've kind of hollowed out certain parts. Feels a little bit less bulbous, but let's remember that the shoe is practically the same weight as the V1 and V2. And I can see how some people are finding this shoe very weird and it's not working for them at all. It really is a very squashy, compressive feel in the Invincible run. Not everybody's going to want that extreme width as well that you've got in the sort of mid to four foot section. It really does feel like a bit of a boat. Though in terms of midsole, there's nothing else out there that does exactly the same thing. The SC Trainer, well, it's just got a really terrible upper. The Nimbus 25 is a much more firm and kind of consistent material. I guess the Magnify Nitro 2 is perhaps the closest thing that we've got to this as an alternative, but that isn't out until July. Can't say I've wanted to use this or pick it up to run any speed sessions anything with any pace in the shoe is just is out of the question for me it's one for those really easy recovery miles as such i'm going to give it a 2.7 for the midsole after 100 miles it's just a very niche shoe to have in your rotation i'd suggest the majority of people if you're not training for a marathon you probably don't really need it outsole now in terms of outsole it's actually really easy to see where the wear patterns are here. Nike have used their grind stuff in the rubber here and as you start to wear the outsole away you get these sort of speckled white dots everywhere. Pretty much all the wear that I've got in the outsole on both shoes is on the lateral side of the heel and then there's quite a bit in the mid to four foot section there. There's almost no wear in fact. Between the exposed midsole areas here, you've even got the small little rubber nubs. They're still there. They are completely missing in that mid to four foot section and the same again in the heel. A good 95% of the miles I've done in this shoe have been on road and pavement. In some areas where the rubber nubs have kind of worn away, rubber's a little bit smooth and in some wet conditions is a little slippery now. I think if you're running in dry road conditions, probably be okay probably even on wet roads actually but i found on anything smooth yeah once those have kind of worn away a little bit it does get a little bit slippery so just be warned there's still loads of rubber left on this thing due to the very very thick and deep kind of application they've used i can't see how anyone would wear through this thing in like three or four hundred miles i think the midsole's probably gonna flake away by that point I mean, unless you significantly scrape your feet on the terrain, like some sort of cheese grater, it's going to last you for ages. I have noticed that the rubber on the lateral and medial sides of the mid to forefoot here is completely untouched, as is the section that's right at the back of the heel here, this nowhere whatsoever. So I guess my form isn't too bad after all. I don't recall the V1 and V2 Invincible run wearing down quite this much at this stage. As such, I'm going to reduce my outsole score after 100 miles to a 2.6 value now have i got value out of this one well it's certainly been a consistent shoe within the rotation over the last few months and it does something that other shoes don't quite do i am a little sad to see some tearing once again on one of the shoes in terms of the midsole nike have obviously tried to do something with some sort of paint and like a outer application to try and improve the durability of the Zumax foam but it still isn't quite there. When you've got something as soft as this foam any rocks or sharp objects are just going to tear straight through it. I was really careful with this pair as well this time but not careful enough. I mean it's not changing how the shoe runs at all or anything like that but it's just something to bear in mind. I do think actually the application of paint that they put onto some of the Zumax midsoles does sort of nerf the feeling a little bit. It's a slightly more stable version of the shoe overall. I do think that is down a little bit to the fabric strobal that they've included on top of the midsole here in the V3. If you like the one and two it's not quite the same ride is that deliberate from nike i think to be honest it doesn't do anything really to help the versatility of the shoe this time around i kind of think the street fly and the invincible run kind of almost fall into the same category really i think that Zumex formula is one of those shoes that really does benefit from having some sort of rigid plate within it i think Zumex as a foam is fantastic if you do have some sort of more rigid plate there but without that it's kind of relegated to it's sort of 
fatigue lessening properties only. It's also a big price to pay, I guess, for this shoe for a one trick pony. I mean, the custom version of this is close to a couple of hundred quid, which is insane. What are you doing, Nike? People are pretty skint right now. They don't have an awful lot of money. I think you're losing sales there to other brands due to your inflated pricing. I think if you really want to check this shoe out, go and buy a discounted version of the V2. The two iterations are far too close really to warrant the extra cash. The cushion's pretty much the same. You're getting the same type of ride, the same type of properties really. And there's many a cushion shoe out there right now and they've all got very similar weights. But when you look at that, this is kind of like a single use, very niche sort of shoe and it's very expensive as well. I think you're probably better off picking up a do-it-all sort of daily model. Thus be careful if you're making a purchase and picking this one up. It's got to be something that is really going to work for you and you're going to get your money's worth. Very expensive, one-trick pony. I can't deny though that it does that trick very, very well and that's kind of saving your legs. But if you're just running 5 and 10 Ks, don't bother. A 2.5 out of 3 for value after 100 miles. If I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us a 10.6 out of 12 after 100 miles for the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flying It 3. So I've reduced the score a little bit there from my initial review, but I think that's warranted really. Yeah, I like the shoe, but it's not something that I want to use every day. It just feels like a very wide, very squashy clog of quicksand. And that's good and bad in equal measures, I guess. What are your thoughts on the Invincible Run 3 from Nike? Let me know if it's been working for you down in the comments. Very quick musical interlude for you. When I was over in Boston at one point, we had like a taxi back to our hotel and they stuck on American Girl by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Made me realise, I don't know why I'd not realised it before, that it actually sounds very, very similar to some material by The Strokes. Like, Last Night by The Strokes is really close to the intro of this song. I remember that Tom Petty did actually sue like another artist for imitating a song that he had but i guess this is like kind of the structure of the song more than anything really is quite close anyway back to the song fantastic chiming rickenbacker sounds here always great drumming as well on early tom petty tracks i really like the general production style as well there's lots of space there lovely guitar reliant melodies too which is something you really don't get all that much of these days. If you've never heard any of Tom Petty's stuff, I do suggest you go and check out like a best of. Refugee and this one are perhaps up there as my favorite tracks. American Girl by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Thanks for tuning in people. Hope you enjoyed the 100 mile review today. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Also give this video a thumbs up like, it really helps out the channel. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.